and Niski. How you doing? How you doing? Hello, good evening. This is where we do calm things down, put our feet up and talk about some League of Legends. Where's the bonfire? Where's the bevy? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think we should really just step it up. We're like, it is a kind of like a sit down in the bar. We're just missing the bar. Yeah. And I mean, well, that's the next step. In, in terms of drinks, actually, how's your hydration? I saw you were just putting that water bottle away. 2.5 liters a day, Niski. Yes. Are even you hitting more, it? actually. Even more? Yeah, even, even more. more. Good, even lad. Need some more water? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I'll yeah, be the some. water boy. And this is a reminder for all of you hydro Thank homies you. out there. And, and posture. Posture check. You know, you know how he sits on the on the PC, legs up in the air, you know, yeah. you slouch yeah. in your chair. I always fall into that habit. Do you know, there are CS players currently competing at the top of the game that legitimately play like this really? on their chair, not even baiting. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Bane. Or, or we have one that just sits like this. When he wants to really try, this yeah. is how he, this <laughs> is how he entry left, frags. Do you have, like, do you have a seat position? Yeah, usually my seat is like something like this. That's yeah. your go-to? Like, yeah. We've been in the off? studio. Oh, we choose off, of course. Shoes of course. off? Yeah, choose off. We're being very disrespectful right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, some furniture master of whatever they call them in German. <laughs> that sounds exactly what they'd call it, furniture master. Uh, but either way, we have, of course, the master of the mid lane. Niski's joining us. I would love to pick your brain a little bit. Mad, uh, just taking down Fnatic as well, which I'm sure must feel extra good. Of course, the jersey you used to wear. Yeah. Uh, and dispatching of them rather convincingly. How would you uh, break that game down for us? How would you summarize uh, how, how that victory came to be? Um... I mean, I think that early game was actually pretty good. I'd say the rift sequence was better for them than it was for us. Yep. Uh, we didn't expect Upset to move there because usually he doesn't really move for objectives. <laughs> uh, but he did there, so good, good job for him. And then they kind of griefed in our bot side jungle where they overextended and then we punished them. And then from that point onwards, we were ahead. And I feel like we kind of did our thing where we just play side laning, we played uh, to farm the map and kind of catch them when they were inting as well. Uh, so, yeah. So nothing. punish mistakes. Yeah, punish mistakes mostly. Played and also kind of play clean, uh, play on tempo and we did a good job. So I'm happy with this one, yeah. Were you surprised when they gave you Talia? Um, I mean, a bit. <laughs> you, were you expecting them to first pick it maybe or something? I mean, I knew either they would give it to me or they would pick it. Yeah. Um, but I guess they gave it to me and they picked Ari, which is fine. But uh, I was happy getting the champ, of course. So. Yeah, I mean, it's so powerful. I mean, we were just talking about it, Machina and I, mm -hmm. and I, with you about the Talia wall when it comes to those immobile ADs, you were saying how it's just so powerful to use the ultimate to zone away these champions that just can't get over the wall. Yeah, I mean, I think Talia is already a strong champion just by itself. And I think if you can utilize it really well, which thanks to my assistant coach, Pat, um, with that helped me with the walls, I feel like I have kind of mastered the champ okay. yeah, at a really great level. <laughs> Rewind. Yeah. <laughs> Just for my brain over here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, you're speaking to like a five-year-old League of Legends player, okay? Just treat, explain like I'm five. Um, your coach helped you with the walls. Yes. Now, are we talking trigonometry, Pythagoras' <laughs> theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's what I'm talking. It's something about the hypotenuse. <laughs> hypotenuse? That's how they taught us. They had a little plant pot on the on the high did, shelf. Hypotenuse. That's oh how we learned God. it. School. Uh, but what, could you explain it out for me? Yeah, I mean, basically, Talia's wall usage can be used for a lot of stuff right. um, that I believe LPS use, LPL uh, uses, uh, uses it uh, the best. So that's where we got uh, where our inspiration from, and that's where my positional coach uh, helped me. And I think right now, at least, I know how to use them pretty well. And cool. I think this game, it made a big difference. Yeah. So how does the process come? Does he come to you with like a dossier of examples? Like, does he just kind of sh sit you down, put a slideshow in front of you and say, <laughs> look at how good they are? I mean, usually it's like I played the champion without him telling me kind of how right. he thinks it works, etc. And then when he sees me do some stuff that are usually not that he has, a, he has a bat that yeah, just yeah. hits your mouse hand. He's like, hey. he's like, um, like, what are you doing here? You know, and it's like, don't worry, we'll have a presentation in two days. And is I'm it like, one of those okay. things where it's like, if you just angled it a little yeah. to the left, <laughs> yeah. aim it a bit better, yeah. get the wall up, yeah. get the carry stuck. Okay, okay. And well, while we're talking about things you do differently or do uh, better than most, it is sometimes hard for, for me, especially to get my head around, you know, I've, I've been p talking to Mark for the last two weeks and something that we keep coming back to about Mad Lions is that Niski is always roaming, always going somewhere to help someone. Uh, and I just want to kind of understand, you know, first things first, why is no one else doing this if it's working so well for you? Do you have an idea as to, you know, what's stopping people? Is it hard to do what you do? Do you just make it look, <laughs> do you just make it look easy? I mean, I think I've mastered this uh, play style already for a while now. Uh, I think it also helps that I play with probably the best jungler in the LEC, I um, think our communication together and yeah. just how we played the early game just uh, as a whole is really good. I also think that it helps that my top lane either goes even or wins lane mm. most of the times. And then bot lane also, they always, they don't really 
lose and sometimes they just win really hard. Like for example, <laughs> yeah. with that driven performance of Unforgiven. Um, so I think it's just a style, a style that I like. Yeah. And I think it works really well when you are really matched with your junglers. So uh, that's just something I do and it seems to be working, so why would I stop? Does that mean that during the early game, there is a, just a very strong dialogue between you and Elioia about like options? Are you kind of, do you have a constant conversation about it or is it much more unspoken? You guys just know what you're up to. Um, I mean, most it's mostly on him on the early game. Right, okay. If he wants to do some stuff, if I have pushed, then he knows he can do stuff. If he knows that we have mid and top push, then we can do some more stuff on the map as well, of course. Um, so it's just mostly we give him information and he utilizes it uh, the best as he can. And I think he's probably the best jungler I ever played with that wow. utilizes uh, information uh, really well. And yeah, I'm glad to be playing with him. How much of that is attached to vision control as well? You know, when we were talking uh, just before we went on, uh, something that was at the tip of your tongue mm -hmm. uh, was your objective control, but specifically vision. Mm -hmm. uh, is that El Elioira's master plan as well? <laughs> no, I mean, the vision is mostly like around mid game where I think we do a good job of taking the fights. We know we're going to win and how we will win them. And I think Kai Siriji does a really good job at that. And like looking for flanks or Ilya is looking for flanks or even Armut looking for flanks. And I just think that we kind of know on how to win the fights. Uh, we don't really just take 40s, 60s, even though we could. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. this game, I think we gave up one dragon at one point or they kind of gave it, I don't remember. But if we know we're not going to win the fight, we don't take it hmm. better than some teams. They just go and they just flip it. It's so funny. This is, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to draw parallels with Counter-Strike. It's just going to happen naturally. Yeah, yeah. But what you're talking about is what we've praised. You know, all of the meta-defining teams in Counter-Strike that was initially like Astralis, and then we've moved on. It was Gambit, et cetera, et cetera. But we all praise them with playing the percentages. Like they're having this constant split-second decision-making of, mm -hmm. is this favorable or not? Is this favorable or not? And it sounds like that's a very similar dialogue happening over here uh, and something you, you credit a lot of your victories uh, because of. Yeah, I mean, I think we just have a good understanding of when we can win fights and how to win and them. And how, yeah, as um, you've got your win conditions out For example, if you know in mid he has no flash, then we for sure fight the dragon if mm. ours has flash, for example. Um, and if it ours doesn't have and they have it, then we would think twice about it, so. Cool. Is there any difference you would attribute to, like, you just talked about your roaming place, and we were talking about why kind of the teams do it, right? You talked about the factors you need around you. When you look at Fnatic, you had a similar style mm -hmm. with TF and things like this. Is there a reason it works so well in MAN and it didn't work out as well in Fnatic? It, it looked good in the lower bracket when it looked good going into finals and mm -hmm. then the world's fallout happened, of course. Is there a massive difference to what you see now in MAD? Because you, you've literally been plugged into a seventh place team and now they're the best team in the league. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sounds good when you say it like that, bro. <laughs> Unreal, isn't it? It does not sound really good. Not to inflate too much. Don't get too cocky. <laughs> oh, but I will, Mark, okay, yeah, I will try to not to. Um, I mean, I think the play style we had in Fnatic, I feel like it was a bit forced, I'd say. I think if we didn't play that style, then we would re look really, really bad, mm. kind of. I um, think we had like a ball lane that would kind of win every single lane. So it also made it easier to play through that. Um, but of course, when you go internationally and then that you don't really have it, for example, or if ball lanes are even better than yours, then it makes the game even harder. And I think that's also one of the things that I need to improve on where like, Maybe in EU I can play the style, but when I go internationally, uh, I think the millionaires kind of are just playing better and the team just plays better in general. So it yeah. makes it also harder uh, to kind of roam around the map, yeah. Interesting. Just to, you're talking about international. You also mentioned that uh, LPL is, you know, I mean, to summarize, the sentiment was LPL copy and paste. Uh, is this something, you know, that, that has always been a part of your game, looking looking abroad and seeing what you, mm -hmm. you could be doing better? Or and what makes the LPL just such a head and shoulders above the rest in terms of, are they just innovating more? Uh, I mean, I think the way they play the game is really, really good because I feel like the fights they're taking and the risks they're taking are maybe sometimes too much. But I think if you just look at it and you spot some stuff of the good teams, but you also don't have to like copy everything. Because for example, in FPL, they mostly go for like 50-50s around the Nashers, right. uh, which is something we don't really They do. like to flip it. Yeah, they like to flip it a lot. Um, <laughs> so I think there's some stuff you, you can learn for sure. And I think that's where they play the best League of Legends for now. So that's where I, just I inspire and my team also inspires. From and them. applying your own filter to it, not just yeah, taking it. You it's know. not like they do it and we just copy it. It's like, mm. they do it, why do they do it? When is it good? When is it bad? And right. we it's, learn from I, it. Yeah. It's just, yeah, learning just through repetitions. Yeah, well. are you excited for Worlds? Because if you like threw yourselves against top esports or V5 right now and they had a similar mm -hmm. sort of style, Ooh. how would you feel like you would fare against it? Do you feel like you're kind of 
quote unquote copying to the point where they're the masters of it and you're the apprentices? Or do you think that you have such a clash of styles that it would be such a brutally aggressive game where everyone's trying to roam and dive everyone? It would be like LPL, LPL. <laughs> I mean, I think it would look pretty aggressive, I'd say. I'm sure there would be a lot of kids in the early game. Um, because usually when team cons contests you in the early game and you play the style of pushing and just fighting, then mm. some team will most likely die somewhere. Do you um, think European teams are not punishing you as hard as they might want to? Or they're like, is there angles to punish this roaming playstyle that European teams haven't figured out yet? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's that easy mm. to counter, to be fair. Also, I don't think it's like the only thing we do. For example, today, I feel like I didn't even roam that much, kind mm. of. We just went through bot and I ulted bot, for example, with a global. That's not necessarily roaming, that's just... We do a good fight and then I go there. Yeah. Um, so I think it's not necessarily that every team knows that I will just push and roam. It's like, if I have the chance to do it, I will do it most likely. But I will not also just blindly uh, roam, lose some minions and yeah, yeah. kind of grief plays. Calculated. Uh, kind of, yeah. And I think that's not that easy to counter. Yeah. Or else people would already have done yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, if they had the answers, uh, you wouldn't be given, you wouldn't be sharing them. Otherwise, uh, I think the answers are harder <laughs> to find. My coaching staff might hate me after this, but it's fine. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're <laughs> Have okay. we gone too much? <laughs> yeah, what have I said? But uh, I'll tell you what I'll say. I'll, I'll say something. It's that Niski is your Kia player of the game. Uh, golf clap, please, in the studio. Thank you Woo. very much. Congratulations, dude. You're farming them now, I'm True. sure. True. I'm the first one, I believe, now. Oh, you must be. You must be I up think there. I must. Do, there do, we, do we have production? Do we have... Pog standings Is right there now? a leaderboard of any description? Do we have a leaderboard of Pogs? Hang I know VTO is quite high up. Yeah, VTO is at four, I think. Mm. And I think I'm at five now. And also, actually, Ooh. fun fact, um, Elio always talks on how I always uh, rob his uh, player of the game. Oh. Is that just so? I just got <laughs> a pick Elio. from production. You are in first place with five. Nice. Uh, VTO and I think Perks, they said, was was uh, tied for second. Yeah, that's what so I So you're the leaderboard right now. You're vote for me tomorrow when we beat Excel. <laughs> Oh, and there's, <laughs> dude, he's doing my job for me. Yeah, exactly. Excel tomorrow. Um, I mean, these boys are looking a little hotter mm -hmm. uh, these last coming weeks. It's going to be a fun one to check out. But I do want to take a quick look at our schedule for tomorrow because it's not the only game we have to look forward to. In fact, our opening game is Misfits versus SK, mm -hmm. two teams who are coming off of strong wins today in the race for those playoffs. Uh, anything jumping off of the screen? Well, we've got Vitality G2 as well at the end of the day. That's the match Ooh. of the week, I think. That could be a banger. Who? What's your call right now? I think Vitality about actually take it because G2 looks a bit not too good, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. yeah. BDS game looked a bit like given to them on a yeah, plate. Yeah, it was given. Of. And I think Vitality's game today looked actually pretty clean, yeah. uh, I'd say. So I think Vitality will take it. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of a polarizing question, but I am morbidly curious. You know, when I see, um, you know, Wanda Hilly on Fnatic, when I see, you know, Caps, Yankos and G2, these, you know, they've been to the, the very highest heights of League of Legends and now are struggling to perhaps be in the conversation for playoffs, never mind Worlds. My, my question is just, you know, is everyone else, is, is the new talent not only getting settled and is now pushing them to places they haven't been before, or is it more of a question of just, they've been doing it so long, day in, day out, that they're not always going to be on their A game? Uh, I mean, I'm not so sure, to be fair. I think for G2 specifically, I'd say probably MSI hurt them a bit. Yeah. I think they probably... I'm not sure if they got burned out. I, I believe they did, uh, or else I don't see why they would be kind of uh, bad, because I think that they were a really good team. So, um, and for Wonder and all the others, I am I am not really sure. Okay, every time we bring up Fnatic, every player personality just seems to go. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, it's, I don't it's know. a weird one because you have such a, like such powerhouse players from previous teams. You yeah. know, Wonder on G2, Bingo. Razork on Misfits, Humanoid on Mad. Look like they are in top top form at the end of last year, and then they all come together. And I feel like connection is so important. I mean, you guys outside of the game, you look like you have such a good connection. Yeah, almost like a locker room diff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's sick. Yeah. I mean, that's I'd say probably the most important uh, stuff I guess in a team where. You actually all want to play together. You mm. actually all trust each other. You have fun playing with each other because you spent eight hours a day, if not more, with your team. Um, and you I think, think in Mad Lions, for example, right now, it's been going really good. Like we make perma jokes. Uh, and when we have to be serious, we are also serious. So yeah. uh, I think we found a good vibe and everyone seems to be fitting in it. Whereas I feel like in some teams, maybe that's not the case. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, because that's really interesting, because I think that is absolutely a conversation to be had. I mean, look at, you know, G2 in 2019, where they were just having fun at all. Like they were just having the, mo the, mo the most fun playing the yeah, video game. Thriving you know? chaos. Yeah, completely. <laughs> and I think that that is a recurring theme. My question is, is like, you know, you're not going to be able to make roster changes 
you know, from an organizational standpoint, you're not going to be able to like bring a player in and, and it, it seems like it might be a bit by accident. You can't control how well the players get on. You're not going to give them like a personality test and be like, oh, he's an ENFP, he's an architect <laughs> or whatever the <laughs> nonsense that's not real is. You know, it's like, how are you supposed to, that, it, it, there is luck involved in having you guys get along so well or is, do you have support? Is there, you know, the coaching staff playing a part in making sure you boys play nice? I mean, I'd say our coaching staff at least has been playing a big part of it because they, organize stuff outside of the game, for example, to do with each other, um, who play sports like maybe twice a week, something uh, like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that helps a lot. And also I feel like we put rules in place that everyone follows. And I think that makes it also easier for people to enjoy being here as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think they did a really good job. Props to them as well. Sounds great. It sounds like, you know, so we've got a little bit of therapy here. People are learning to set boundaries and develop meaningful, powerful relationships that yeah. are thriving. And you need them. You do. And that has been really insightful. I really enjoyed your, our time. Thank you, Niski, Thank for you. spending the time. Thank you, Mark, for holding my hand. And uh, I'm just going to keep in this seat warm for one more night before I have your shots to portrait will take back over. But that's all from me now. Thank you again to everyone that's been tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow for more of the same. Cliché wave as we fade away. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Welcome back. We are going to be jumping into our third game of the day. It is Team Vitality versus XL. Here we go. Massive ultimate into the flick back. The solo layers of Vitality in perfect synergy. One push away. And now with the hex flash over the wall. Synchroth might fancy himself. He finds himself a caps. He does get himself a demonic ascension, but the Lulu is dead. And is the Zipper. They don't want the Dragon Venus, they want the kills, and that seed that you knew needed blood is starting to get pretty damn big into a tree. Yankos, though, you can see the power of this uh, uh, this Swain really moving forward now. They can't kill off the Swain. Caps is still alive. One more auto attack will do it. And Max Valley will pick up a double kill now. Broken Blade. Humanoid looking to try and get over the wall. The charm does not land, and Ooh. he gets fully engaged upon Flick back as well. And he's got nowhere else to go. He does get Ooh. himself into the resurrection, but a three-man knockup means a two kills going over to Unforgiven. He's going to be able to pick up a third. A triple to the jinx as Niski finishes off the Ari. That was clean for Mad Light.